Hello everybody, I truly hope that you are doing very well and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where I'm going to be diving into the Bitcoin chart today, going over our key levels of support and resistance, how this range is continuing to still play out. And, you know, I'll be giving an update on whether we can still see a $35,000 Bitcoin in the month of June. So stay tuned for all of that analysis. And without further said or do, let's get straight into what we absolutely love. And that is, of course, going over the Bitcoin charts. So the last video that we made was while Bitcoin was up against this uh, resistance level. And obviously we had a little mini range going on at the top of that resistance. Okay, it looks looked like this. We obviously had within here a few key levels. We have obviously the overall high that was made on the 30th. We then had our range within here. We then obviously had a lower daily level below us. We actually can see how we were really well range bound for between the value area low back up to the value area high, back down to the value area low, back up to the value area high, in the end losing the value area low, bouncing off of the daily. And what we actually saw is once Bitcoin hit that daily and got back into the range, uh, the correlation that we're always monitoring, this ES correlation with Bitcoin, okay? And so we can say to ourselves, at that moment in time, we have just seen Bitcoin, you know, do a little bit of a fake out of the mini range. Again, this is definitely a day trader's range. It's more for people down on like the five, 10 minute time frames. But we had seen the bounce off the daily, reclaim back into the range and ES strength locally. Okay, and with that correlation, myself, I was thinking, okay, we're, we're gonna be going for higher. The invalidation is obviously easy off of this type of day trade. We've now got back into the range. Losing that point of control is the invalidation. But for me, I'm looking for at least yesterday's high. What is yesterday's high? It's really simply that high that was made at around $32,250. Okay, that's yesterday's high. <clears throat> So I'm thinking to myself, you know, I want to educate you in this video so you can learn and understand my thought process. Yeah, scared money don't make money. You have to you have to be able to have the confidence to trade these things and understand it's a game of probabilities at the end of the day. There's no guarantees, but you know, we can have biases, we can have confidence, and we can have, you know, high probability trades. So when I'm looking at the context of the move in a range, fake out of the lower of the range, reclaim, strengthen the ES, an untapped high with liquidity resting above. That's kind of what I'm what I'm going to trade for. OK, the invalidation, e.g. the stop loss of the long idea is easy and it would be a, it would have been a loss of the point of control of that mini range I was trading. OK, and um, I'm looking for for the high of, of yesterday. And then there was a really interesting question. I want you to pay really close attention to my answer here. Uh, there was a question. Again, this is for the scope traders on the lower term timeframes. But there was a question that, you know, Daniel, the high that you're looking for, because I'm obviously trading on Bybit, somebody asked me the question, the high that you're looking for there has already been taken on Binance, okay? So th we've seen this situation a lot of times where the high is taken, for example, on another exchange, and I'm waiting to trade this on Bybit. And the question is, you know, that high has already had a swing failure pattern on, on Binance. Could this not be the high and we're, we're going to head down from here? Well, my answer to this was, you know, as a lot of people already know, I like to, um, tr to, 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 to monitor off of this trade exchange I'm trading on. My answer was, it doesn't really matter what's happening on Binance. Get ready for it to happen on Bybit. I wouldn't short yet with the stop loss above the high. Because just think about this for a second. Everybody that is trading, for example, on Binance or is that monitoring Binance, they are gonna be in this moment in time shorting with their stop loss above that high. Okay, so this has already moved up. On Binance, it's seen a swing failure pattern. On Bybit, it's still hovering below the low. So it's drawing in a lot more liquidity because what is happening, exactly what I said I wouldn't do, but a lot of newer traders, they're gonna be thinking this. Oh my God, we've seen a swing failure pattern on Binance. It's a large volume exchange. I'm gonna place a short order here with my stop loss above yesterday's high or above the high that was made. And I'm, you know, I'm gonna trade this swing failure pattern. Not acknowledging that it hasn't happened on one of the you know, another another really massive exchange. And I like to see this across all boards. So my thought process is, you know, I'm in a long, I know where I'm wrong on this idea, because at the end of the day, I might not be right all the time, but I have a very high probability, because this is a type of statistic that I record, that this high is gonna be taken on Bybit. So I'm thinking to myself, let's go higher for at least yesterday's high, and everybody that's shorting too early, in my opinion, is gonna get stopped out. 
okay? And we're talking about 10, 15 minutes later, we did see that, okay? We did see that move above yesterday's high. Here you can see where it was slightly front run, okay? You can see that's yesterday's high, the, the target that I was going for on this day trade. That was the invalidation losing the point of control. You can see how it was ever so slightly front run on this candle. You see a heavy pullback to the old range value area high before that next move to the upside, okay? And what happened there? Kind of exactly as predicted. The the, the 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 you know I'm not meaning this in a mean way or anything, but I'm just saying like these newer traders that aren't aware of everything that they should be looking at have just got like stopped out. Okay, and then what happened next? Well, we obviously did take that high, but it ended in a swing failure pattern. Okay, so we can see here that again, this is down on the much lower term time frames, but it kind of ends in this move above the high, coming back down below. And as you can see, other people, shout out to Younes, Hefe, you know, that, that, you know, taking also these type of um, swing failure pattern type trades. As Younes says here, it's not a typical swing failure pattern, but the open interest, once you see the acceptance back below the high, is worth that short trade. Why? Because it's got that easy invalidation. Okay, we kind of really like to trade these um these type of trades because yeah, the, the invalidation is really easy. You know why you're getting into the short and you know where you're wrong on that idea. And that's just an absolute key factor of being a trader. You need to know where you're right, where you're wrong and why you're taking that trade in the first place, of course. Okay. And well, we all not kind of know what happened next. Hopefully you can kind of, you know, picture this along the way. For me, myself, I actually had a first major take profit back on the range point of control. Okay. And again, this was more for a day trade for myself. Still, I still hold a percentage of that short position even now. But of course, I've taken the majority of my profits on this trade because it was set up for myself as more of a day trade, by the way. But we can see that ended in a swing failure pattern. We hit the point of control of the range. And in the end, we obviously lost that point of control of the range. And we have headed down much lower, of course, to around $29,300. If you paid close attention to the last YouTube video that I made, you would have noticed I actually had marked out a CC at $29,300. And I got back asked back on the 31st, um, so, you know, now over, you know, last, end of last month. What, why have, uh, what is this level? Okay, what is this at 29,300? And for me, it was the HVN. This is a really important, massive support level. Okay, so remember, we're recognizing this support that if we drop, Okay, and remember, we're still trading at around $32,000 at the time. But we're recognizing, well, I'm recognizing anyway, that this is where the massive support is going to be. That if we drop, we need to be aware of 29,300. This zone is really key. What else do we have down around here? We also have the CME gap, by the way. And just an FYI, I know people are, uh, you know, people have been wanting changes where you're going to get ready for this shortly. We are going to have the read-only channels within Discord. I know people have been wanting this for a very long time and hey, we're gonna finally do that. We're implementing a lot of feedback that has been requested. So yeah, stay tuned for that over the next few weeks. Um, yeah, that's uh, pretty good. But I wanna just focus on, yeah, what was that level? It was the HVN and that was at 29,300. Remembering, recognizing this a few days in advance, a really, really key level of support. We'll, we'll continue on to what's happening now. Okay, but we can kind of see how that really did, you know, in the end come down, you know, <laughs> making its way down anyway. At this moment in time, we've seen then a swing failure pattern of the high, a loss of that range. We then here on this candle have back tested the point of control. You know, this is for some people going to be a short trade. Okay. Others may be patient waiting for higher, but obviously in the end, a lot of people have taken shorts on the back test. So it's kind of like a loss of the range, back test to the point of control and a subsequent move to the downside. I'm just reminding my team once more, this was yesterday around 7 p.m. Don't forget about this 29,300. It's a really, really, really key level, okay? And we can actually see what happened just a few hours later we actually come down and we tested $29,280 Per, you know, pretty perfectly for this initial bounce to the upside, which is still kind of trying to occur right now. So if we come down on a lower term time frame here, we can see how we tested that HVN really, really, really nicely. And we got this, you know, move up to back test $30,000. Okay, so now I want to move on to the levels that I'm looking at next, I really hope I've been able to educate you well enough of why each of these moves have happened. Okay, so really simply, we move up to the top of a range, we get a swing failure pattern, we get a change in market structure, we get a back test. I actually really wanted to short the uh, value area low here once more. Obviously in the end it didn't quite reach that level, but that would have been an epic short. <laughs> in the end it kind of didn't, didn't get that high, back test at the point of control, saw another rejection, and then another move to the downside, 
Why did we not bounce off of any other level? Because price is drawn towards these high levels of support. If you see here, there's no real support here. Okay, it's just a really quick move up to the, to the upside in the end. We smashed through all supports. I was aware of a level around 30,000, 600, 30,400. In the end, we went straight through that like butter. There's no support found. We were moving down really, really quickly. This is the advantage of having alerts preset and not you know, limit orders preset, because if you have pre limit orders preset, it hits and you're instantly underwater. If you have the alert, you see the alert go off and you've already seen the level lost. There's no trade. You know, you live to fight another day for your bigger levels of support, which is obviously down around this 29,300. You know, one hour later, we come down, we tap that level and we begin our bounce. OK, so now I would like to cover, you know, what we're looking at right now. So where are our next support and level support and resistance levels? You know, how are we looking to uh, move forwards on this? And of course, I'll answer the question of is thirty five thousand dollar Bitcoin coming here? I just want to do a few really quick announcements here. The first is that. I have started the new accumulation and distribution schematic series that started yesterday. So that's all live on the website right now. If you want to go and check that out, you can see in the past 24 hours, we've had three live streams already. And there is a live stream occurring right now. This is live right now, George, with his morning update. Okay, so if you want to like come over to the website, we've got so much content here, you can see. Uh, this is the, the legend himself doing a live stream right now for the members. So you can see that we've got so much content. Last 24 hours alone, that's four different live streams. Just so much educational content to get stuck into and really, you know, grind away at this and, you know, really, really, really learn what's going on in the markets, why the market moves and what you're looking for next. OK, so, yeah, that's just a little announcement. Started that educational series. That's over on the website right now. And if you want all these updates, well, that's also on chartchampions.com. So, yeah, shout out to George. I'll go out and, uh, you know, re re yeah, catch up on this once I've finished this public video. Um, so, yeah, moving on to what's happening now then on Bitcoin. We can obviously acknowledge really, really simply, uh, you know, if we just zoom out a little bit here, we have this still the key level of resistance, which is around $32,000. It's been a key level for quite a while now. $32,000, of course, up to $33,000. This is our major level of resistance, okay? And we have now a major level of support. That's around from 28,800 to 29,300, okay? So this little zone of support for me is absolutely key. While we remain above this, of course, it is support. You know, I'm not looking for shorts at support, just as when we're up here, if, you know, I'm talking about swing trades. Now, again, I, I know some newer traders can get confused because I'm talking about different time frames within the same video, you know, but swing traders are not looking for longs up here until we've actually cleared resistance and holding it as support. Just as swing traders are not going to be looking for shorts down here until maybe the level is actually lost, okay? So you have to be really careful preempting a move, okay, or actually trading a preemptive move and not actually waiting for that level of confirmation, Okay, because I will happily say that I was had a very bullish bias up at the highs, but I did not execute on that bullish bias because we never actually reclaimed a clear key level of resistance that I wanted to see turn as support. If that had happened, I did foresee a very large move to the upside. But because that never happened, I never executed the plan. Okay, I remained you know, objective of what's actually happening on the chart, okay? And if we never clear this level and flip it to support, it's resistance, and we are totally still range-bound. So this is like a really key understanding of the markets. You have to truly understand that, okay? Obviously, the last video that I've done is, it's a question, by the way. Bitcoin is going to at least 35K in June, question mark, okay? I'm not saying it's definitely going to 35K, but what I'm saying, for example, is if we can reclaim 33K as support, this is our major resistance. If we reclaim that as support, for sure, we're going to be very much looking for 35,000 at least on Bitcoin up to like 40k. But unless we see that, the, the answer to this question, uh, the answer to the question is going to be no. You know, is Bitcoin going to at least 35k in June if we don't reclaim 33k as support? Well, no. <laughs> okay, so I know some people were commenting like, oh my god, Daniel, I closed my short because you had a question of, you know, Bitcoin is going above 35k. And, you know, this, you have to acknowledge this is a really, uh, really silly idea, okay, because... This is, a, this is not a factual statement, uh, okay? There's a lot of moving factors and, and parts to this. So just like, do not FOMO off of a thumbnail because again, I can change a thumbnail whenever I want. I can change a title whenever I want, but the content of the video, I can never change. So you have to pay attention to what I'm actually saying in the video, please. Never trade off of a thumbnail or a title. Never do that because it's just crazy. Sometimes even what I'm saying in a video is 
totally not even related. So just listen to what I'm saying. The content that I'm giving you is of utmost importance, the levels. We need to know when there's signs of strength. We need to know these probabilities, okay? And so the question that I, will, I said I'll answer once more is, if, is Bitcoin going to at least $35,000 in June? Well, the answer is, I would say yes to that answer if we can reclaim 33K. Why? Because 33K is our massive level of the top of the range. Unless we can flip that into support, I'm not going to be looking for that level, yeah? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's very much a very key level for myself. And obviously this value area low, we're looking at the overall higher term time frame range. This is a, such a key level to reclaim. At the moment, it's just simply being back tested as resistance. And absolutely, we can head down lower. But first of all, again, we're not necessarily gonna be looking for $23,000 while we're still above $29,000. You see how this makes sense? I can definitely say I have a target of 23K, but I'm not necessarily still trading for that at the moment, because I recognize, you know, that 28,800 to 29,300 is support, okay? If we lose this support, then absolutely those probabilities increase greatly that we can come down to such lower levels. But at the moment, I've got levels to trade, and I'm focusing on these levels. I recognize it's a level-to-level -level environment. We are totally range-bound at the moment. I'm not going to get overly excited and YOLO and then go full in while we're at the range high, and I'm not going to be shorting support while we're at support, okay? I really hope that this makes sense to everyone. I'm not really confusing people, but for me, it, it's kind of simple, okay? We need to we need to recognize the levels of resistance. We need to recognize the levels of support. If we can flip that resistance into support, guess what? It becomes great support. Probabilities are very much that we can head up to 35K, just as at the moment. We've got great support here. If this is lost, well, I'm not necessarily going to look down to $35,000. I mean, sorry, uh, $23,000. We still have levels within this range. Again, we can pull our CC from the high, the low here to the high, and we have then a new CC within here. Okay, you're going to see things like this. So then we can have new levels within here. That's obviously low of this is coming in at around 27,600. So it's not a case of, you know, lose this support. We're all going to 23K. No, we still have levels within this range, of course. But losing this major level of support is going to, of course, give us access to the next level, to the downside. It's like a game. We're unlocking each level along the way. And this is this was our level of resistance. We cannot unlock 35K until we clear 32K and hold that as support, can we? Hope that I hope that came fine or that makes sense. Okay, so yeah, this was just a really quick video update. I wanted to bring your attention to why we're bouncing, where we're bouncing, how this was, you know, recognized, to be fair to myself, a few days in advance that that would be the key level and how we absolutely tap that level to the dollar. Um, pretty insane. We tap that level to the dollar for the bounce here that's occurring. You see this on the lower term time frames. Okay, that was bam, straight away to bounce. Obviously, right now we're up against that 30,000 psychological level. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, I hope that has made sense to you. Hope that has made sense why we rejected in the end, where we rejected, how you have to be on the lower term time frame on the ranges to kind of you know grasp this and even get into those trades of those swing failure patterns. Why we're bouncing, where we're bouncing, the levels that I'll be looking for next, and how at the end of the day we're range bound in June. So um, you know, let's not get bullish or bearish. Let's trade the range until it breaks at the end of the day. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more from me, smash that like button. And um, also, yeah, if you want to see a video from Mike, obviously Mike predicted this range really well. Um, you know, also shorted at 32k. He, he did. So if you want to see a video from Mike, let us know down in the comments as well. And um, yeah, I suppose I'll just end by saying thank you ever so much, everybody. I truly hope that this has been helpful for you. If you want to see more educational content and learn from us, that's obviously chartchampions.com. And um, yeah, we obviously are listening to your feedback. We're going to be implementing a lot of changes over the next few weeks. And, you know, we're just trying to improve this experience and, uh, you know, take on feedback that we've received and, you know, make everything better for everybody at the end of the day. So yeah, thank you ever so much and have an absolutely brilliant week ahead. Cheers, everybody. Thank you and goodbye. Oh yeah, no, I will end. Of course, this is not financial advice. This is just educational entertainment video only. Make sure you understand that legal trade disclaimer. And with that, I will say thank you ever so much. I love you all and goodbye. <laughs>